What's up, Smart Homers? My name's Aaron, and in this video, I wanna show you how I created the ultimate person card for my Home Assistant dashboard. Almost two years ago, I made a dashboard video, and it's been my most popular video by far. One of the most requested things in the comments on that video was that I make a dedicated video on how to create the person card that I showed there. Well, I'm finally getting around to it and I actually decided to customize the person card a bit more. Okay, so let me show you how the card works and then we'll go ahead and build it. So this card has a Bitmoji image of me in the center and along the top it has icons that give more information about me and about my phone. This is handy for my wife and other members of the family if they wanna look at the dashboard and in looking at the card, see a few little bits of information about me. The card has a bunch of indicators along the top of it. This first indicator here is a location indicator and it displays a green house icon if I'm at home. It'll display a red house with an arrow leaving it if I'm away from home, but if I'm at work, it shows an orange office building. The next indicator here shows the status of my phone's ringer. If it's silent, it's gonna show a red no phone icon. And if it's on vibrate, it's gonna show an orange vibrating phone icon. If the ringer's on, it's gonna show a green regular phone icon, but it's also gonna have a number next to it, which is the volume level of the ringer. The next indicator is my step count, and this comes from my Google Fit steps. It has a shoe icon with a number of steps in it, and that number is gonna stay red until I hit a certain step goal, in which case it'll turn green. Next, we have the Bluetooth status indicator, which just indicates whether or not the Bluetooth on my phone is turned on. If Bluetooth is on, it shows a blue Bluetooth on icon, and if Bluetooth is off, then it shows a red Bluetooth off icon. Lastly, we have the battery indicator, which you can see here lets you know how much battery my phone has. The color of the battery icon and text also changes as the battery level hits different thresholds. Clicking anywhere on this icon, as you can see, opens up the map and shows that person entity or my person entity on the map. This obviously requires that that person entity in Home Assistant has a device tracker linked to it and also that you have zones set up in Home Assistant. Below the avatar is something that's hidden. And when I turn on Spotify and start playing music, it takes a couple seconds, but look what happens. The image changes to one with headphones on and the name of the song and artist scrolls along underneath the image. Now you can even see what the person is listening to on Spotify. The next feature is also something new I've added to this card and that's that you can swipe over on the card to reveal a little bit more detail about that person. Here I'm showing all the same information, but with a little bit more detail. And I've also added some calories consumed versus my goal, a little chart showing my step count over the past few days and things like that. It's just an example of what you can include here, but you can definitely include a lot more. Okay, before I show you how to build it, there's a few things you're gonna need to have installed first. First, you're gonna need to have the Home Assistant Community Store, also called Hacks, installed on your Home Assistant instance. If you haven't done that already, I just made a dedicated video on how to do that. So click the card up there and it'll take you right to it. And then you can come back here and finish watching. Next, you're gonna need to have a few custom cards and components installed. So you'll install these via hacks. You're gonna need card mod, custom button card, the swipe card, the stack in card, and the mini graph card. So go ahead and install those as well. Once you have those installed, you're ready to see how this card is built. If you'd rather not follow along and you just wanna have a copy of the code, don't worry, I'm leaving a copy of this in my GitHub that's linked in the description. So you can just go there, you can copy and paste this into your Home Assistant instance and you can try to figure it out yourself that way. The entire card is based on the custom button card, but I have two of those together in a swipe card. If you don't know what a swipe card is, I've already kind of showed that and I also showed it in my previous dashboards video, but it's pretty much a card that allows you to stack cards on top of each other and then you just swipe over with your finger or click and drag with your mouse and it'll reveal the card that's behind it. Let's start with the first custom button card that shows the avatar, which to me is the coolest part about this card. Like I said, it's a custom button card and the entity that is chosen is a person entity. This is gonna make it so that you can tap the card and it's gonna show you more info about that person, specifically that person on a map. 
We're gonna go ahead and set the aspect ratio at a four slash four or a four to four ratio, which is really the same thing as a one to one ratio. But here you can see that if you change it from a four to two or a four to one, how it changes the shape of the card. We're gonna set show name and show icon to false because we want this card to stay a blank card for now. Here's where we're gonna get into some custom styling to style this card, specifically the background and just the way that we want. We'll style the card and then we're gonna add some custom fields and their styling. First, we'll add some padding for the card so that things don't run too close to the edge. So let's do 4% for now. Next, we'll add a background image. And this image I'm actually gonna add is one that I created on bitmoji.com. You gotta sign in with your Snapchat account or an email address, and then you create an avatar, and then there are stickers that you can actually download of different expressions that your avatar's face is making, and then you can use those in Home Assistant. To get them in Home Assistant, you upload them via the file editor add-on, or whatever method you choose to add files to Home Assistant. I recommend giving it a name that you're gonna remember because you need to reference that name here in Home Assistant. After that, I also created a custom image that has headphones over my avatar's head, looking like my avatar is listening to music. You need to upload them to the local directory or the www folder that is in the Home Assistant directory in Home Assistant. Back to the card here, and we're gonna use an if statement that I'm showing here to set up a condition. This statement pretty much says that the background of the card is gonna be the regular this statement pretty much says that the background of the card is gonna be the regular Bitmoji image, but if my Spotify account starts playing music, then it's gonna show the Bitmoji image with the headphones on. Notice that the URL to the image is in the local directory, and that's actually called the www folder in your Home Assistant directory. Don't ask me why, it's kind of janky, but that's just so you know. Now we're gonna set the background size to 90%. If you set it really small, like say 20%, you can see that it repeats itself. So we wanna turn that off by setting the background repeat to no repeat. The image still isn't centered, so we're gonna set the position to top center. One more thing we need to do is keep the background. This way, if we put this card in a stack in card, it's not gonna wipe out that background image when it tries to force this card to use the same background as the stack in card. If you don't understand that, don't worry about it. Just put this code in like I say. Okay, so now we're gonna create our custom fields. This part is really cool. These are little icons on the top of the card that display information. And these fields can be called whatever you want. So we're gonna define five custom fields, starting with the first one, which we'll name location. We're also gonna add this custom field to the styles section that we created earlier, and that way we can position it in just the way we want. For the location custom field, we're gonna go ahead and create an if statement that defines different icons based on where the person entity is. We'll say that if the person entity's state is home, meaning the device tracker assigned to that person entity in Home Assistant is in the home zone, then we want to display a house icon. Notice you can set the width and the height of the icon as well. Now we'll just repeat this for the work icon and the away icon. You can see now that the house icon is in the bottom right, so we're gonna use styling to change its position and color. Under the styles section, we'll set the position to absolute, and then the left and top margins to 4%. You can see that this places the icon in the upper left. If we wanted to move it to the upper right, we would just change that left margin to a right margin. If we wanted to be centered, we would add both left and right margins. Kind of see how that works? The color is also going to be an if statement. If the person entity state is home, then the color is green. Otherwise, if the state is work, then the color is orange, or otherwise, it's red. You can see these colors are defined in hex format. If you want to specify different colors than what I'm using here, just Google hex converter and you can set any color you want. And then you can copy that hex code and paste it in here. So that's basically how you create and style custom fields in the custom button card. I'm going to add battery, steps, ringer, and Bluetooth custom fields now. These all come from data provided to Home Assistant either via the Home Assistant companion app or another integration in Home Assistant. To set the position of these fields, you can see I'm just playing with the margins in the style section until I get them where I want. So with the battery custom field, you can see that we're also adding text. So you wanna use the span object to do that, displaying the state of the battery entity as text. 
a certain percentage. And you follow that with a percent sign, and there you have it, this little string of data. Again, with the steps field, you can see that the span object is used to display the state of the step sensor, which is a numeric value, in this case, right next to that sneaker icon. In the case of the ringer field, I'm only showing the state of the ringer volume entity if the ringer is actually on. If it's off or on vibrate, there's no value show. Okay, so the last one is the media field, and this is one I just came up with recently, and I love it. You'll notice here that I've added a marquee object. Inside that, I have the icon and then the span, which is displaying the media title followed by the artist's name. The marquee allows the text to scroll across the card, so even if it's wider than the card itself, it can all still fit and be shown because it scrolls across. Obviously, song names can be long as well as artist names, so it's nice to be able to have that scrolling along, and also it gives the feel that something is playing and not just static data. So that's pretty much it for this top card. It's pretty straightforward now to add this card to a swipe card so that we can add more cards behind it. We just move the entire code down a couple of lines and then we'll add the custom swipe card at the top. We'll set the parameter to cover flow since that transition of swiping is what looks the best. And then we're gonna type cards colon. Now we just select the entire code tab it in twice, and then we're gonna add a hyphen in front of the word type. So that's our first card in the swipe card, and now we wanna add the second card that's behind it. Now down at the bottom, you can tab in and create a new card. I'm not gonna walk you through this one, but you can get my YAML from the link in the description as I mentioned. Pretty much, I just created a stack in card, which is a card that forces two cards together into one, sharing the same background. I set the mode to vertical, so they're gonna stack vertically, and then inside that, I put a button card and a mini graph card. The button card has an aspect ratio of four to just under three, and on the button card, I added a bunch of custom fields, tastefully spaced using padding, and these have a bit more info than what you'd see on that front card. So it's kind of like you're swiping over to get a little bit more detail. The mini graph card that I put in there just shows my step count over the past few days, but you could have it show your heart rate over the past few days or literally whatever you want to put in there. There's a ton more you could do with this second card, and I'm just kind of throwing some things on there to give you ideas, but I thought I'd show you that you can do a lot more once you add the swipe card. Anyway, that's pretty much it for my person card. I hope this quick little tutorial gives you somewhere to start to start digging into dashboards and custom card design a little bit more, and especially the custom button card since it is such a powerful tool. If you like this video, please subscribe and hit the bell so you can be notified about future ones coming out. I plan to do more dashboard videos in the future, so if you're interested in that and you want to see some more of those, hit the like button so I know that you're interested. Anyway, thanks for watching. See ya.